Hi, today we're going to be doing some mandrel bending. This is inch and 5 eighths 083 chromoly, and this is a rogue fabrication M600 tubing bender with our new mandrel attachment. It is the most affordable mandrel bender in the world, and it's even made in the USA. And you can see right here, 4130 mil stamp, and then there's your dimensional right above my left hand here, inch and 5 eighths 083, and of course, made in USA. Uh, we're going to cut this down in the saw real quick so it's a little more manageable and then we'll show you what the bends are going to look like. Now that we have this tubing cut down, we're going to clean the inside of it. Cleaning the inside of the tubing is good for mandrel life and it also helps reduce friction a little bit. But tubing is not terribly clean on the inside when you get it. So this is just a piece of welding wire with a rag on the end of it. That's all there is to it. And now it's super clean. And I'm going to give the lubrication injection system a couple pumps. That's squeezing the bend all 002 through the little holes in the mandrel, putting the lubrication where the bend is actually going to be without any difficulty at all. So we're going to do the bend. We're going to go to about 60 degrees, and then we'll show you how it's extracted. Okay, now we're going to relieve pressure from the drag system, and then we're going to pull the mandrel out the back using the Acme Drive crank. And this has a generous amount of travel for extraction. Uh, you can kind of determine how much you need. It's related to spring back and what material you're bending, but I only used about three inches of the travel there. through with this pin extraction. It's more difficult the more you bend because that creates more spring back. So if for some reason you end up with this whole thing locked up and you can't do anything, you can always pull the pressure die pin and you can also unbolt the mandrel and just pull it straight out the back that way it's not even in play anymore. And that bend came out looking pretty nice. We haven't done a whole lot of bending on this material with this mandrel yet. So we're still kind of figuring out what works the best, but that's a pretty good looking bend, especially considering it's 083 wall, inch and 5 eighths on a four and a half radius. Uh, there's no other bender that I know of in the world that can bend this material on that tight of a radius without wrinkles, uh, unless it's a mandrel bender. And currently this machine is about 15% of the price of the nearest mandrel bender that's actually rated for inch and 5 eighths outside diameter steel tubing. So. It's a pretty awesome value. Uh, this is the one we just bent in the video, and this is one that we bent a little bit before that. And what we do is we measure the deformation number, you know, the, the actual measurement from the outside to the inside, and we divide that difference from the OD by the nominal diameter. And that gives us the percentage of diameter that we lost. And non mandrel benders on this material usually you get like 7 to 10 percent or more, and that's even on a bigger radius as well. So on these, you can see that they are actually noticeably different, even on camera here. This one is the one that we bent earlier. 
The mandrel was further forward, which does a better job preserving bend quality. And if you have it too far forward, it causes other problems. So that's kind of determined empirically what the best position is for that mandrel. But this one's only 3.3% deformed, which is pretty excellent considering the budget for this machine.